What's up you guys, it's Maddie, and today I'm here with the fashion and outfit content that I promised that I would do more of. Honestly, I just need to do something fun today. I just need to put on cute clothes and take cute pictures and talk to you guys. I just need to have like a good little, a good little moment today, you know? I say that because I feel like my recommended pages on social media have been so fucking toxic and negative lately, and it's just bringing my shit down, okay? And it's nobody that I subscribe to, nobody that I follow. It's all of these fucking recommended for you pages that push me content that I actively hate. Like, I, what's up with that, huh? <laughs> They're like, oh, you like body image content? Here's some really negative content about bodies that happen to look like you. Like, a bitch is not invincible, okay? I can't be looking at that shit. I feel so good in my body, in myself. I'm living a good life inside my brain lately, okay? And then I go on TikTok and I see some shit I don't wanna see and I, then I'm having a bad day. I'm like, for what? For what, Mango? Yeah. Dude, I completely agree. <laughs> so today I just wanna try on outfits, take some cute pictures, and sit here and talk to you guys like right a sleepover in 2004 okay because that is where i want to be mentally emotionally physically is that a sleepover in the year 2004 okay it's all i want <laughs> hi mango Mango came dressed for the occasion. She's got a little lavender jumpsuit on because she got spayed a week and a half ago. So first up, I want to indulge in this black dress from Nasty Go. I don't know what it is lately. I have been wanting to wear skirts and dresses. I'm like, since fucking when? I hate wearing skirts and dresses. There was like a, a switch that happened in my life because when I was in like high school, I really loved wearing skirts and dresses because I was like, fuck pants. And then I totally flip-flopped and was like, you know what? I have big thighs, baby. I walked literally two blocks and all of a sudden my legs are bleeding and I'm like walking around like this. <laughs> I think I'm all set with that. Like I don't need to deal with like my legs chafing all the time. I've tried a million solutions for it. It's just, it's never that comfortable. But I think that now that I'm inside all the time, I just feel like I can wear dresses and enjoy myself because it's just me in my bedroom. Chillin'. I get my Instagram picture, I sit and feel cute all day. I don't have to worry about my thighs bleeding when I walk to the train. So, you know, it's the little things. <laughs> I really fucking love this dress. I love little poopy shoulders. Ugh, Gorginia, you know? One of like my first memories of dressing the way that I wanted to dress is actually a really bad memory. <laughs> I was in the seventh grade and I went to school wearing this purple button up dress, like buttoned up all the way top to bottom. When I sat down in this dress, around my boob area and around my stomach area, the buttons would separate a little bit, which is normal. And I remember the teacher calling on me to answer some fucking question. A bunch of these boys that were sitting in front of me turned around and started whispering to each other about how I was fat and you could see my clothes were like trying to burst off my body. And honestly, middle school was a mess for everyone and I have a million other stories like that, as do most people. I think it especially sucked though because that was one of my first times dressing for myself. It wasn't an outfit that my mom picked out for me, it was an outfit that I picked out for myself and felt really confident in. That happened a couple months before I started making YouTube videos and I think that when I started making YouTube videos and being more involved in like the online community, there was more of an emphasis on what I was wearing and more of like a push to wear unique things and have a style because now I was making videos. I feel like when you're broadcasting yourself and you're making videos, you become more aware of what you look like, especially when you're the one editing the videos. That doesn't mean I was dressing well, okay? The year was 2009, 2010. We were all walking around wearing like fucking snapbacks that we bought at Zoomies. We were popping into Aeropostale, picking up a nice teal t-shirt, maybe going to Abercrombie and Fitch just to look at the models. Maybe we'd take a picture with them on the way out. Maybe we'll stop in at Delia's, get that fucking t-shirt with the peanut butter and jelly and Liz's like, you're the peanut butter to my jelly. And then we go home and make a stop motion music video to that fucking song. It was a very specific time in life, okay? But <laughs> that was, I feel like around the time that I started like being more interested in like what I was wearing and like trying to curate outfits. Again, they were not great. I'm not saying that I was a fashionista in the eighth grade but I'm saying that I started to be more aware of the fact that 
I could develop a personal style. <laughs> From there, once I got into like what was trendy on the internet and what other creators were wearing, then came like the era of Tumblr. I saw someone the other day posted a video on TikTok being like, I, I wish that I was like 16, 17 in the year 2013, 2014, because that was when like the Tumblr grunge was fucking everywhere. It's like Doc Martens and fucking flannel t-shirts and ripped leggings, <laughs> like so good, so good. And you know what, the vibes were there. But I think that being a part of communities like that where the like, the aesthetic was very strong, very uniform, across the board, everyone was wearing shit like that. And you were also cool. Like at the time it was like, oh, you were that bitch, okay? You were the Orion Carlotto of your friend group. <laughs> and that bitch is still cool. So I don't know, we might have been on to something. <laughs> I really do amount a lot of how I started dressing the way that I want and not caring about what people think to the internet and the communities that I was a part of, and also my Aquarius moon for making me think that I'm always the most unique and different person in the room. And obviously this evolved over time, like there's so much of how you dress that you're not even fully aware of. Like when I was struggling with my body image and definitely had a lot of internalized fat phobia, I wouldn't dress myself to show off my curves, obviously. I was still dressing the way I wanted to, but at the time, the way I wanted to dress was hiding myself like I wasn't confident you know what I mean like I was dressing the way that I wanted to dress but that didn't mean that I was confident and by by any stretch of the imagination let me continue fucking doing things while I talk I do this every time I start talking and then I'm like here playing fucking night of the museum talking like okay let's do your tasks <laughs> so the fuck was I talking about Oh, this is what I get. <laughs> I think the older that I got and the more little like ounces of confidence and courage that I got, the more that dressing myself turned into a way to become more confident. And like through dressing unapologetically, I was finding my confidence. I've talked before about like dressing to enhance the parts of my body that I am insecure about and how this past year I really started wearing tighter clothing that really enhances my stomach, which is an area of my body that I've always, 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 always struggled with. And it's really helped. You know, after a couple months of wearing shit that highlighted my stomach, all of a sudden now I'm like posting pictures of my stomach on Instagram. And like, I don't give a shit. And I, I feel good about it. I really like my stomach now. I think that there's a lot to be said for the fake it till you make it mindset, which is always what I used to tell my dance students when I taught hip hop dance. Is in order to help them get confidence on stage, I always used to just tell them, you have to pretend like you are that bitch. You have to pretend like you are the best dancer in the room. And if you don't believe it, then no one else is gonna believe it either. You sort of just have to pretend you are that bitch until you become that bitch. I mean, people always say, the first step to being a hot girl is believing you are a hot girl. It's fucking true. I think that for me, like dressing how I want unapologetically was like step one to faking confidence. Was just like putting clothes on my body and letting it happen and like living through that fantasy. And in the age of Tumblr, that was very easy because you had like a whole aesthetic going on your blog and you could really work on it, you know? Yeah, I don't know. Lots of words flowing through my brain right now, but I hope you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> also, I think that sometimes the reason why we feel scared to dress a certain way or show off a certain part of our body is just because we aren't acquainted with it. That's how I was with my stomach. I wore Spanx all throughout middle school and high school. I would double up. I would do anything and everything to try to suck in my stomach and make it look like it was not there. I got a little older. I decided that I hated that shit. I was not gonna wear Spanx. And then it wasn't until this year that I started literally with the intention of trying to make myself like my stomach, started wearing clothing that was tight to my stomach. But I think in March, when I first started trying to wear clothes tight to my stomach, it was more from the angle of like a rebellion, which I think a lot of my self-love journey has been. And like seeing a lot of hate towards a certain body type inside my brain, not loving it and not believing that I was worth it, but at the same time just wanting to be right and just wanting to be like, no, there's nothing wrong with my body. This is beautiful. You know what? Fuck you for saying that and I'm gonna prove to you it's beautiful. And then all of a sudden becoming confident because I needed to be right. <laughs> like, I think that there's been a lot of that in my self-confidence journey where it's like, 
I just start to feel like it's a rebellion where I'm like, you don't want me to like myself and so I'm gonna. And I'm gonna be so loud and out there with it that you are never going to be able to fucking escape me. You fucking moron. <laughs> it's like that Lady Gaga quote where she's like, someday you're never gonna be able to walk into like a grocery store without hearing my fucking music, you moron, you idiot. You actual fucking, uh. I'm like, you know what? You are literally never going to be able to log on to social media without seeing my stomach because you said one mean comment about me and oh, your stomach's gross. Well, guess what, motherfucker? Now you're gonna have to look at it every day of your fucking life. That's why I feel. <laughs> but I think that the more I did that, the more I dressed to show off my stomach and maybe it did start as an act of rebellion, but over time I became more comfortable seeing my stomach, more comfortable showing it off, and now I feel like it's really sexy. Like, and this is a very recent thing. Like, I'm, I'm 23 years old. This happened this year with my stomach. Like, obviously my self-confidence journey is like everlasting, right? So I'm gonna be like 28 years old, 30 years old, 50 years old. I'm still gonna be learning new ways to love my body and, you know, fucking going through more acts of rebellion, I guess. And if you're anything like me and you need to be right all the time, I think that you can sort of use that to your advantage in a situation like this where it's like, well, they all said that you should hate yourself. I need you to really search inside you for that need to be right all the time and like let it let it come out right now, okay? Because this will be a good time for that to come out. I never thought about it like that until I just said it like this and it really makes so much fucking sense. <laughs> also, I just got these earrings from Cyberspace Shop. Got a little Playboy bunny earring as well as these spiky earrings. They remind me of Mario Kart. Uh, yeah. Next up, I've got this furry bodysuit from Nasty Gal. It's got arms on it as well. My only beef with this bodysuit is that I feel like it was definitely made for people with broader shoulders than I do. I just get scared that it's gonna like just completely fall off and all of a sudden I'm gonna be like titties out, which is fine. You know, I'm comfortable with that, but my gut instinct is to want to wear this with jeans, belt, and maybe some funky shoes. Do I even have any funky shoes? Maybe I could wear a coat on one arm. Right? Maybe. I might be onto something. <laughs> something that I've been thinking about recently is how much easier dressing myself has gotten in quarantine. Like I really feel like over the last couple months, like obviously this is in part because I don't get dressed up as often. I used to take forever to get dressed in the morning because I was trying on a million things like throwing my entire closet on the floor. And lately that has just been like non-existent in my life. These are the boots in question. Picking up absolute dust at the bottom of my closet. I don't think I've ever worn these. Not that you're even really gonna see these shoes in the picture. Do I even like them? Yeah, cause you're gonna figure it out by doing this. <laughs> Next outfit is my fall girl fantasy baby. This is me living my fall dreams. In December, you might ask? Unfortunately, yes, but that's a separate issue. <laughs> With this outfit, I like to wear my Teddy Fresh beanie. I still can't decide if I like on me. Every time I put it on, I wanna laugh. <laughs> but you'd think that those of us with bowling ball heads would look better in beanies than people with small heads, right? Cause it's like, well, it fits me. But this is how I'm living. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> put on like plain black, like Chelsea boots from Urban. I don't know what a Chelsea boot is. So I've been thinking a lot lately about like what my 2021 goals, resolutions, things like that might be. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, shut up. That's boring. <laughs> As I start thinking more and more about like what should my 2021 resolution should be, there came an idea. I wanted to get your thoughts on this. What if I swore off dating 
for the entire year of 2021 and really committed to giving 100% of my attention to myself. Not that I don't already, right? Because I, it's not like I'm really dating, but there's still men that I speak to that I just feel like perhaps they're just a distraction, you know? You know, I'm not a very spiritual or religious person really, but I do believe in like divine timing and like finding things when they're meant for you and not a second sooner. And I just feel like for the last year and a half, the main message I've been getting in my love life is like, not now, not now. Like it's not, it's not here. That thing that you want, that thing that you're looking for, it's not here. But here's this man that's gonna steal two months of your life and distract the shit out of you. I think that I'm like at a point in my life where I'm really clear on what I want from a person that I could have the potential to be romantically interested in and like I know what I have to give and I have just not been given anybody that is up to par. <laughs> is it worth it? to keep putting myself out there and trying to meet people when I feel like the main message I've been getting for a while is just like, the person you're meant for, the person that's good enough for you, the person that's gonna check all your boxes, like does not exist in your world yet. So stop looking for them. The other message that I feel like I have been really getting in my life lately is just that like now is the time to charge ahead in my career and I feel really called to do a lot of the work that I've been doing for years and I've had a lot of great things happen to me in my career recently and just feel like perhaps swearing off dating would just give me that extra bit of time and focus and energy that I need for myself right now. And I want it, I want it for myself. I don't wanna give it to anybody else right now. I really feel like I deserve that time and energy. The thing about me is that I'm such like a hopeless romantic that every time I start talking to someone or get involved in someone in even a minor way, I wanna like really give it a fair shot and like see if it's something. And so I end up dedicating a certain amount of my time and energy to like speaking to this person, hanging out with this person. And that's time that I could be using to like better myself and work on whatever the fuck I wanna do. But also there's the added layer of like talking to people brings a certain amount of emotional dread. When it goes bad, then I'm gonna have like one or two days where I feel like shit or there's like a pit of anxiety in my stomach. And that's two days I can't get back, right? If I'm having some sort of emotional experience and I need to take a day to myself to just like stare at a wall and do nothing, that's a day that I just lost because of fucking who, 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 who matters? They matter, no. But like I'm human at the end of the day, right? You're getting involved with people, it doesn't work out. It's gonna impact you in some way no matter like how long it was or wasn't. Cause most of the time it has nothing to do with that person. It has to do with like, every person who's ever done that to you and then you're sitting there like oh, I can and you just need to take a couple days to just you know rage out feel whatever you're gonna feel and that's fine right but I don't even want to do that anymore like I don't want to give those days away I don't want to sit and waste an afternoon being anxious because somebody hasn't texted me back yet like I just the person that's right for me would never make me feel that way <laughs> I'm sort of joking because like obviously nothing's perfect but like I'm also kind of fucking serious. Like, I just don't feel like perhaps this has been something that the universe has been trying to tell me for a while and I just haven't been paying attention because I like am such a hopeless romantic and just wanted to be like, oh, it's out there and it is out there. But I don't know that it's out there now. Perhaps in my timing of my life, I'm supposed to spend like all of my 20s just like Maddie City. You know, Party City's going out of business. I'm opening up my own doors. <laughs> that if I committed all of 2021 to like, no. Like, no, you will not talk to me. You will not take me on a date. You will not do shit with me. That that could be perhaps beneficial to me. Something I'm really considering for 2021, my new year's resolution. Give your whole life to love other people. How about you love yourself right now in this moment when things are so good for you? I don't know, what do you guys think? I wanted to get some thoughts on that. To people who don't date or like aren't fucking hopeless romantics, they're probably listening and be like, okay. <laughs> but like, this is like a thing for me, you know? Like it would be a big deal. I don't know. Okay, anyways, my outfit's on. It's been on this whole time. Let's go take these fucking pictures. <laughs> So 
So for my last outfit, I really need to... You know, I thought that was a pit stain at first. Turns out it's a hole. I don't know if that was the better or worse conclusion to come to. My titties are sweating, like sweating right now, and I need to provide some relief. So we're busting out the titty top. Sincerely, what's not to like? She's cute, she's comfortable, we've got a nice little breeze going on. Here's the thing, right? Like all these other fashion fucking, all my other fashion girlies, they can just like set up a camera and stand in front of it. I'm like, okay, well I've gotta go all the way back here to even figure out if I like this outfit. Let's do it, let's just say fuck it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. As of yesterday, I started streaming on Twitch, so I'm gonna leave my Twitch down below. We'll see if that's something I end up doing a lot of. I'll I'll talk more about it if it's something I end up doing a lot of. Be sure to follow me on all social media. I'm at Maddie Drospec on pretty much everything. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in the next video.